All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about bringing in DXFs into Inkscape and how to deal with them. I'm just going to go ahead and go File, Import, and I'm going to take that DXF that we just made earlier today. Um, there we go, St. Louis Mod 1, JMK. We're just going to hit that. Manual scale factor 1 to 1. Actually, what I want to do is DXF input should be 25, 24.5 inches. And let's go ahead and see if that pulls up. Awesome. Okay. So here's that shape that we worked on earlier. Um, let's talk about adding some fonts to this because, you know, you never know what you're going to run into. And someone may ask you something like, hey, I want my name put into here. So let's start working with that. I want to go ahead and pull up some interesting fonts here, see what I have. Um, not angel tears. Let's do something with a couple more curves, maybe something a little more cursive just to make it interesting, make it difficult. Um, let's go with Damien. That was a fun one. All right. So we're going to do my usual Bob is a Bob is a fish. Okay. Now Bob is a fish and I'm going to go ahead and expand that out and add that to the shape right in the center. Like right there, Bob is a fish. Cool. First thing we're going to want to do is go path, object to path. Turn that into Turn that into a text. If you, I mean, turn that into a vector. You click on it. Look, it's a vector. Awesome. Though it's a little bit of a dirty vector, so I'll hit Control L and it removes small chunk of those vectors. Now, um, in this particular case, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do to um, make sure that we don't have anything that's going to fall out. For example, looking at the inside of this B, we're gonna we're definitely gonna see a fallout there. Um, there's a couple of ways that we can ensure that we do that properly. Let's go ahead and start to discuss that. Um, one way is by going over here to draw Bezier curves. And we actually go and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. I want to draw a little bit of a, a piece here like so. Here and like here. I like that shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually edit the shape just a little bit. I want it to get it a little closer to where that where it cusps with that. So that when you actually go to 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 make this little shape, it's going to seem more natural with the actual um, the piece here. So you'll see. I'm just going to um, click on this letter here. Um, object ungroup because all those letters are grouped together right now. I'm going to click on this. Hold shift and click on the little shape, go path, difference. And now it's going to actually remove that shape and um, allow it to then that middle piece to not drop out when cutting it. Similar to like this A here is already slotted like this. Um, we can even, even further simulate that, that scenario there by um, dropping this back a little bit. Maybe we can. You make little subtle adjustments to give it the appearance that, well, no, this is how the font's supposed to look. Rather than giving it the, let's just say, the, the cutout. Now we see. For now. And you can, you can continue to smooth things over in order to give it that maintain that shape. That's just one of the ways. There, there's other um, more complicated ways. You can also do things like, well, I'm just going to make this shape. Um, click here, hold shift, click. Make sure those two are selected, path, different, and now it's going to give this this weird strike across the middle because, hey, it's art, right? Options are there. There's multiple ways to make a slot. You see the way they did it with the A and the top of the B, and you can simulate that in the lower shapes. It, again, there's lots of options to Let's say, for instance, you know, this B is overlapping this O, but if you look at the vectors, they're not actually connected. So when it goes to cut, it's actually going to overlap over itself. We don't want that to happen. So what I'll do is hit Shift, and let's go ahead, and from here, I want to do something. I'm going to remove the fill and add the stroke paint so we can see what's going on. Those two will overlap, and the plasma is going to cut both of those. So rather than dealing with that, we're going to go, we're going to make sure both of them are selected. I'm going to go path and we're going to go union. And that's going to take that overlap point and join them together so that we can 
get a cleaner cut and not an overlapping cut, which can tend to cause issues like the plasma cutter will stop cutting if there's no material there to cut. So just things to take into consideration. Um, go ahead and start from here and work onwards. Let me know if you have questions and I'll be here. Thank you.